Hi guys, welcome to Fierce and Pretty. Honey here. Today we're gonna do a little book tour. I know I've made a lot of videos about books, trying to focus on a section of a books at a time. I can link those earlier videos because I've talked a lot more in detail about several of these books. But I thought that because I put the picture of my new bookcase that I made myself. May I introduce Julia, my new bookcase. Because, you know, you guys who remember John back in the living room, uh, it started to get too tricky to know what books I had, to find the right books. Because in John there's only two shelves and everything was kind of like stuck inside and behind the doors and it was dark and hard to see and messy and whatnot. So one day I stopped by after work to Ikea and of course because I made it myself one of these shelves is upside down but I think that it just adds some character to Julia. But now Julia is in my bedroom so I can see all the books because I sleep right there and I can see the books when I go to bed, I can see the books when I wake up and it brings some color because our, our house is like super white, like really Nordic white. So some dark green, petrol green color it was nice. And this bookcase only has my, my, my witchy books, some tarot books, but most of my tarot books are up in the attic. So it's mainly about witchcraft books today. And if you have any detailed questions about some specific books, if you want me to talk more about them, let me know in the comment section and I'll do a more specific video if something interests you. But this video would take forever if I would go through detailed all of these volumes. So, let's start. The books are not in any perfect order. I would never al alphabetize my books. That's something like Manuela would do. <laughs> but Mine are like kind of more Wiccan books on the upper shelf than some random mix. It goes like not particularly favorites up, but most of the classics up, then something that I find interesting. I don't know, it's not really organized, nor am I. So the first one is the classic To Ride a Silver Broomstick by Silver Ravenwolf and people have opinions about this book but actually I think it's kind of okay in many ways I thought it was worth reading and if you've been following me for a long time you would know that I like to read on a really wide range because when you read a book then they reference all these different classics and I want to read the classics myself and not just to trust on other people's dismissive um, comments about them or if they think it's rubbish. I still want to read it and form my own opinion. I even read the Finnish translations of Scott Cunningham's Wicca book, which everybody seems to hate nowadays, but I just needed to read it. But it's not here anymore, so you know what I think about it too. Then the next book, Spiral Dance by Starhawk. Again, kind of like classic, like with this, uh, Ride the Silver Broomstick. If you look at the contents of this book, it's really kind of good overall, you know, well rounded book, if I would say, about witchcraft. So I can totally understand why so many people who started witchcraft decades ago started with this spiral, spiral dance and the ride the silver broomstick. And one good thing, even though I like first editions and rare stuff, I'm just weird that way, but buying these classics sometimes when they have been revised, sometimes you can do better if you find the new, newest version, if the author has revised the book and some of the like misconcep misconceptions and bad, bad facts that like the amount of witches being killed 
uh, and the witch hunts and witch trials, you know, those have been updated in some of the books. And But when you read these old classics, you need to read them like not sucking in every word, but trying to take it as a creation of its time. And I think everybody who you know can read books should have that critical mind not to take everything as an absolute truth anyway anyway then the next two books are next to each other there's wicca 333 wicca 334 and there's also i believe it's wicca 101 um, and all by the same author katrin McMorgan Douglas and these I got inspired by getting by watching Thorn Mooney's content and I found them really interesting. This one I've read already. This one I haven't finished yet so I don't have a really good opinion. Um, this author has um, spicier voice, opinions and this is like more philosophical thinking, thoughts and um, exercises and that you could do yourself to create your own ideas and beliefs but it's based in Wicca so if you're not interested in Wicca not for you but I like them and I, I like reading books from authors also that are sometimes a bit more you know spicy have stronger opinions even though I like the book, it doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with all, all of their opinions. But I'd rather read something that has an, you know, flavor to it. Rather than just 100 similar blah 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 blah, like listing text book style books. So, I think they were worth getting. One organizing thing that uh, that I have happening on the bookshelf is that I have the, all the books by same author next to each other, even though they're not alphabetized. Next we go to Doreen Valiente, and I also have a lot of books on my Kindle, so some are there. I can show that later on. This is a book that Hubby is afraid of. It's a collection of all the I don't know all, but a lot of poems by Doreen Valiente. And he's always scared to see her face. Even when there's a book cover on my Kindle with Doreen's face with an actual photo. <laughs> I think that's funny. But this is a small little book of poems. And it's called The Charge of the Goddess. And I really like this. I like Doreen's poems and they are like one poem on each page and they are divided like with the seasons of the year. Really nice. An ABC to Witchcraft, Past and Present by Doreen Valiente. Haven't read this yet. It's kind of like a dictionary type of book with witchcraft things, words, concepts. Uh, only thing is that, which what has been keeping me away from this book is, do you see the size of the text? It's like all the pages are packed with small, small letters and it is a rather thick book. It's roughly 400 pages. And here you can see little like how it goes. It goes alphabetized. But this is not a book that I would even read as a book book. I would use it as a reference book. Find something, check it out. Then two of the, I think, most spoken about Doreen Valiente's classics, Witchcraft for Tomorrow and The Rebirth of Witchcraft. I don't know, not my like favorite books in any way. But these are the type of books that I want to be reading because they get referenced over and over and over again. But it's like for my baseline study, history study in a way. But nothing massive that I've learned practically in this. Then next to Doreen, there is 
Gerald Gardner's books, The Witchcraft Today and The Meaning of Witchcraft. Again, not the best books, same as the Valiente books, but I think this was funny. I was reading this one. It's a quite a small book. I was reading this last summer in a hammock and <laughs> you can kind of hear Gerald Gardner's voice in this and I could kind of see him. He has a kind of funny way of writing in this that I've heard this and this has happened and I'm not sure if it's it's a funny way but one has to think about the era when these were written because this book is from 1954 and the witchcraft act had only been what is it, removed or quit I don't know pretty close to that so the world wasn't open for the subject of talking about witchcraft so that's kind of behind there also because I have Margaret Murray's book The Witch Cult in Western Europe a study in anthropology which was you know published before Gerald Garner's book and the history and all these are like going to the Stone Age and talking about witchcraft coming as a continuum surviving through ages as a religion and everybody can form their own opinions about that. But again, those kind of baseline books that if you're interested to get the history and know what the books are referenced, that's what those are for too. One of my absolute favorites, favorites that I think everybody who is interested in witchcraft should read at some point is Aradia, the Gospel of the Witches. By by Charles Leland, I think is worth and worth worth its place in every witch's library. Then we're jumping from Gerald Garner kind of to the second wave to the people that are initiated by these first witches by Alex Sanders or Gerald Gardner. So Janet and Stuart Farrar, the Witch's Bible, and this actually has the two books in it. But this book is just important for those who are interested about the Wiccan practice. Because it is like really all about that. All about those Sabbaths and rituals. Well, if you just are interested of the Sabbaths but you don't want to work, like casting a circle in Wiccan way, then there's half of this book that is worth for you. But it's not the easiest to read there are like rituals written out and more again kind of like a reference book that I keep going back to back and forth with then again from Janet and Stuart Farrar the witch is God and the witch is goddess and I think these would be interesting books for everybody who are interested in deity work because there is like in the witch is goddess there are, I don't know how many pages, alphabetized lists of goddesses with different names. And there are from all the different cultures. Like if you look at here, Mieliki, major finished forest goddess. So that gives you the idea of the book. But there's a lot of listings of the goddesses. And then we have images. Seeing Sheila Nagig always reminds me of James Feeney. <laughs> Statues and stuff. And with, again, with the books written by Janet and Stuart Farrar, one needs to think that they are, again, kind of a bit, a bit older. Like in this one, the copyright is from 1989. So back when I was seven. So really dated. But the same, same with The Witch's God. Just the masculine version of the first book. Then there is this one. It's written by Janet Farrar, but not anymore by Stuart, because he's not with us anymore. But with Gavin Bone. And The Lifting the Veil. And this book covers the history um, and modern practice of trance, as well as the methods of practice, including like ecstatic ritual, drawing down the moon, sex magic, working with the spirits of the dead. 
So, kind of a more detailed book than the Witch's Bible. And then, one of the classics. This is one of my favorites. And this is What, what Witches Do by Stuart Farrar. And from this you have old versions, different versions with different covers. Mine is the third edition. Here you see the content of this book, but again, only book for who are interested of the Wiccan practice. Then we have the, the next on the shelf are books from modern initiates of traditional British witchcraft. First we have here Jason Mankey's Transformative Witchcraft and even though this has a lot of like, you know, we can flavor all over it, of course. Mankey is a Gardnerian priest, but one of my favorite things, for example, in this book is how he explains the concept of raising energy. And there are many, many good things about this book. And the best thing about modern books is they are, of course, easier to read. Than, than like Gerald Gardner's text. The language is more modern and for people like me who are not English-speaking natives, it's a lot easier with modern English. But this, I think, is worth even to people that are not, you know, interested about Wicca per se, but still there are good bits for there. To other practices. Then, just yesterday, when I was shopping at Tarot Puoti again, I found Jason Mankey's uh, Witch's Wheel of the Year book. And it was funny. I'm, I've been listening to Jason Mankey's new podcast. Here you see the podcast with Meg Rosenbrier, Witch with Books podcast. And it's in the same kind of place where Jason Mankey's own podcast was before. And I was just listening it yesterday morning on my walk and they also talked about this book by Jason Mankey and I was like, oh, I wish I could get that book right now because, you know, in bulk is just upon us and if you are celebrating the Sabbath with the Wheel of the Year, I always find like to find inspiration in several books and then creating my own things to celebrate the Sabbath my own way. But I thought this was a great reference book to get. But I haven't read it yet because I just got it yesterday. Then a book that I've talked a lot about before and I've even interviewed Brian Kane on my channel earlier. I will link the video down below. I really like this book. Really, really like it. I think this is one of the best books if somebody is interested of getting into initiatory witchcraft. And if you are interested about that path, then this is kind of the first thing that I would buy. Then some more classics. As you can see, that's not really organized. We're jumping again from modern to classic. But Drawing Down the Moon by Margaret Atler. And this is one of those books that I talked about getting a newer edition might be worth. Because this is revised. It's first published in, uh, in 1979. And this edition is revised in 2006. So, and there has been a lot of changes, updates done to this book. So sometimes with the classics, if they have a new revised version, I would go with that. But I think this is a really interesting. And this is not only about like really Wiccan style witchcraft, it also talks a lot about paganism. And now we jump more away from Wicca here with one classic, Mastering Witchcraft by Paul Hewson. You can't read any book or listen to almost anything without hearing about this book. And this book again is already from the 1970s, but kind of a classic that I think every witch should read at some point. Then let's jump to the kind of second main branch of traditional British witchcraft. So I've had Gardnerian authors here and I have more Gardnerian authors coming. But now let's jump to the Alexandrian uh, witchcraft part. 
and here I have tons of books. This is King of the Witches by June Johns and it's a biography kind of of Alex Sanders. A really small old paperback and this was first published in 1969 and this my edition is from 71. To a history buff like me I, I really enjoyed this even though with everything you need to take with a grain of salt because somebody has written things about someone and there are stories told but these are kind of great gateways to get into the history kind of put yourself in the 60s, 70s when we, uh, the witchcraft move, movement was waking up in this massive way and kind of get the feel about what they were doing, what was happening. So even if you are not in, interested of Alexandrian witchcraft per se, but if you want kind of a history story, I think this is good if you can find it somewhere. And I'm sorry, some of these books are hard to find. I know, because I've hunted them. <laughs> and another great one. And this is by Maxine Sanders, so Alexander's wife. And Alexander died years and years ago, but Maxine Sanders is still alive and kicking, doing well. And this is her autobiography. And reading this after Alexander's biography was like a great combination. Even though my copy is not signed for me, I found it online, but at least it is signed by Maxine Sanders herself. And she actually confirmed that to me, that it is her authentic signature when I, when I asked her. So this is a precious book. I, I really, one of my treasures. Then you have, if you are interested of Alex Sanders uh, and Maxine Sanders, but you can't get those books that I showed because they are hard to get, there are these that are currently in print by Jimal Dipiosa. Several books. I have one of them on my Kindle or two, I'm not sure. There are many versions. All the King's Children. The Human Legacy of Alexanders is this one. And this one is, I think this is the first one of this series, A Coin for the Ferryman. The Death and Life of Alexanders. Then the next item on my shelf is one of my treasures. This, I am sorry, is a total collector's item and you can't get it anymore. So this is an actual notebook of handwritten by Alexander that was ripped and torn apart and then taped together. But I'm just showing it quickly because it's not at least easily available. It comes in a huge set with a wooden box. Then two books are same. The other one is leather bound. The other one is green cloth fabric. But this one is like photos of the actual pages of the notebook. And this one is the translations of them, so they are just typed in easily readable form. But this is one, one of my, my precious treasures. And then we jump again from Alexandrian authors to Gardnerian ones. I guess everybody knows Thorn Mooney and her books, Traditional Wicca, A Seeker's Guide, and then The Witch's Path, advancing your craft at every level. I've recently been listening to this one, the newer book, The Witch's Path, on also an audiobook in the evenings when I go to bed, because that's actually a good quality audiobook with a good reader. But both of these, well, even I think. This has, this is for the beginners and, and mo mostly those who are interested of initiation, group work, uh, coven work more. But this, I think, is very useful book even to people who practice non-Wiccan style of witchcraft. Because this has 
many like great general topics of and I, and I love the honesty of her voice how she talks about experiences how her practice has evolved during these past 20 years and what she's been through the ups and the downs and really good one and I've shown this before it's the witch's ointment so everybody who's interested of the flying ointments a specific book about that by Thomas Hastis then again with the classics list a bit more modern classics than like Gerald Garner, Ray Buckland's Big Blue, and then Wicca for One. Mm, I don't know, not my favorite books, but again those that I wanted to read because Buckland is a big part of the American side of the history of initiatory witchcraft. Then starts the second part. We are jumping away from more of the Wiccan books into a miscellaneous witchcraft book area. And that one we start with Nigel G. Pearson's books, Treading the Mill, and then Walking the Tides. I think this book by Nigel G. Pearson would be a good um, choice if you don't want the more Wiccan version by Jason Mankey, same topic, so the Wheel of the Year, but not gone through in, in a Wiccan way, even though the Sabbaths are based in, in Wicca, but uh, if you're not wanting to read all the time Wiccan books, so then I would recommend those. Then I have the two books by Aidan Watcher, Six Ways and then Weaving Fate, and even though these are small books, they are not fast reads, easy reads, they are really kind of practical and helpful. Then this one, everybody has, I think, Psychic Witch uh, by Matt Oren, which I have also an audiobook, really, really practical book. Then a great one by Levi Rowland, who is co-hosting the podcast uh, called Covendom with Brian Kane in his Hex, Edu Hex Education YouTube site. But this is an interesting book for combining astrology with uh, magic. And I love the layout and design of this book. Combining astrology and magic. The art, cosmic. Then I have The Heart of Wicca by Ellen Cannon Reed. She's also made The Witch's Tarot deck and written Kabbal Kabbalistic books. Again, one of those small books written with a voice, but I think more to the people who are interested on actual Wicca. But interesting, opinionated book. Then if you want to read kind of from one book, more about the history of what uh, Wicca is, Modern Wicca by Michael Howard. Yeah, I said no Wiccan books, but hey, on the wrong shelf. But this is from 2009. Going through kind of the history. Talks about Gerald Gardner, Alexander's yada yada yada. Coming to the Edge of the Circle by Nikki Baro, a Wiccan initiation ritual. More of a personal story. Not one of my biggest favorites. Just but an easier read. Very personal, kind of experiential. Yeah, more we can book, sorry guys. Witchcrafting by Phyllis Kurot. And she has her own branch of Wicca. But still, I think this is as good a book as Jason Mankey's uh, Transformative Witchcraft. I think these are really useful for many type of witches. I. There are many things that I like the way that Phyllis talks about them. So, one of the good ones. Wicca for Beginners by Thea, Sub uh, Thea Sabin. Mm, not my favorite, but, you know, just a kind of basic one-on-one -on -one book. Then The Witches, A Path of Power, A Complete Course in Magic and Witchcraft by Lady Sable Aradia. Its topics are intent trance, the craft, intoxication, intoxicants, Dance and Sacred Movement, Blood and Breath, The Scourge, and The Great Rites. So, very Wiccan. Then two books by Althea Sebastiani. This one I really liked. A small practical book by Rust of Nail and Prick of Thorn. 
anybody who wants to, you know, start practicing doing uh, protection magic, uh, protecting charms, whatever spells like that. Really practical, encouraging little book. Fast and easy to read. And then A Witch's Guide to Spellcraft, also by Althea Sebastiani. And this goes in a way that you start reading this book uh, along with the lunar cycle and goes through with the different phases of, of working with the moon. And again, one of those non Wiccan books. Then this one I got when I was in London in Watkins Bookshop, a Psychic Protection by William Bloom. And I also have Dion Fortune's kind of similar uh, titled book, I don't remember that. Something on uh, psychic protection. I have random Finnish books, all the Finns out there. I didn't like this one. This author had a tone and <laughs> you clearly see how they dislike some of these people. It, it's called The Masters of Magic. But wouldn't recommend it. Then sorry again, two more Finnish books. Well, this is a Finnish translation. It's Kate West's um, Wiccan's uh, handbook, I think for a younger teenage type of starter book. And this is for the Finns. Uh, what Wicca is by Titus Yelm. It's a Finnish book. It talks about initiatory witchcraft here in Finland. A really cultural, interesting piece. Then like Jason Mankey's book, I have the Llewellyn's Sabbath's Almanac for this year. Also finding inspiration. They do them yearly. Sky Alexander's Modern Witchcraft Spellbook. Pretty, but mm, not for me. Sigil Witchery by Laura Tempest Zakroff. A really practical book for anybody who's interested in sigils. Then I have books that I haven't read yet, that I got as a birthday gift from Manuela at Place of Stillness. Thanks, Manu. But they're all falling down. The Great Work by Tiffany Lasik. Self-knowledge and healing through the Wheel of the Year. So again, one of those reference books that I can use with Sabbaths. Then Stephanie Woodfield's Celtic Lore and Spellcraft of the Dark Goddess, Invoking the Morgan. Haven't read it. Then this one was my own, The Grimoire for the Green Witch by Anne Mora. And I think this is a really nice reference book. Uh, and not really only kind of Wiccan based, but there are really nice correspondences and there are rituals, but as a kind of reference book, I think it's really nice. But then I got from Manu all these. So Green Witchcraft, one, two, three, four. I haven't read them yet, can't say anything about them. Then one kind of a coffee table type of book, The Witch's Wheel of the Year, which is just beautiful with all these different illustrations, inspirations. Again, something to inspire me in working with the Sabbaths, getting ideas for arts and craft. It's by Andrew Kiernan, so The Witch's Wheel of the Year. Okay guys, two done, two more to go. Then I have Vivian Crowley's Wicca, a comprehensive guide to the old religion in the modern way. This is really looking basic Wiccan concepts more of the Jungian, Jungian way, archetypal way. So if you don't like that aspect, maybe not for you, but if you do, and if you are familiar with the archetypal work, with young and and if you in, infuse that into the tarot then maybe this one is for you. Then I'm just gonna quickly show because in this bookshelf I also include my astrology books here because that's where they fit. I have Hellenistic Astrology by Chris Brennan, an awesome tome, and Ancient Astrology by Demetra George. Classic, The Illustrated Picatrix, a fantastic little book of really old astrological magic. I have a Finnish translation, uh, Finnish translation about Juliana McCarthy's um, 
stars. Then I have the Celestial Art, Essays on Astrological Magic, uh, edited by Austin Kopok and Daniel Schalke. And quickly a few Finnish books. The Book of Spells, I've shown this before, Old Finnish Spells. And this one is great. Old Finnish Spells from this region where I live. Like, you know, what they said to the cows and whatever. Really old Finnish folk witchcraft. Then this is called The Black Book. It's found in 1862, a Finnish witch book. This, to uh, this tome goes in one, one of my favorites. It's by Judica uh, Illis, the, Encyclo uh, the Encyclopedia of 5000 Spells. Great one. Good reference guide, but also the first 100 pages is really easy to read, really useful knowledge. So it's not just a reference book, but it also has a quite large book talking about many witchy things. So I think it's worth getting. Great recipes, great ideas, and if you find something, one type of spells, you have different options if you don't happen to have the ingredients or whatever. So, I like this one. Another type of uh, coffee table book, Witchcraft, Magic and Occultism by Christopher Dell. Finnish translation, but this is really a beautiful book with short chapters on many occult topics and this is kind of a similar book by John Michael Greer the occult book really similar just smaller then I have the Greek magical papyri in translation old Egyptian magic you gotta love that really interesting then we got come into the herb section so, these are reference books, a modern herbal by Mrs. Grieve, two volumes, really great ones, really, if you're interested about herbs, I think these are really good to have. Even though they are old, they are great. And a book I think everybody has, The Cunning Hands, Cunningham, Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs which I find, well, fast, but not really. It doesn't have all the information. It's really kind of surface level. Quick reference, but if you really want to know about the use of the herbs in old magic and, and more about the properties and how to use it, and, and if you want like more scholarly data on what you are putting in your teas or in your tinctures or oils, I'd I wouldn't do them based on Cunningham. And this one is a great practical book, The Master Book of Herbalism by Paul Bayerl. This one is like something in between practical and between this, but a really, really good one. Then I think every witch that worked with herbs should have books from their own local plants, which I'm really happy that we have. This is the Magical World of Plants by Sini Capipo. And here we have some Finnish plants, but also talked in a magical way. So this is a great treasure for Finns. And then this is one of my treasures. It's also, it's, uh, it's called Finland's Health Plants. So this is not in any way a witchy book. It is Printed in 1982, so the year I was born, and I got this from my mom, and it's amazing. <clears throat> it still talks about like herbal medicine throughout times. It has amazing pictures. It has like really good data. So, if you work with herbs, try to have some like real botanical books, not just witchy books with witchy correspondences, because. Books like these make it safer. But look, all colored images of, of the plants that we have here in Finland. So have something like this, because I believe every country has something like this. It's not in the same bookshelf as the witchcraft books, 
but you're definitely gonna, gonna find something like this. Okay, it's time to go to the bottom shelf. Let's see. Well, the main witchy book that is still down here is Christopher Penzig's Inner Temple of Witchcraft. But next, the books are more kind of miscellaneous. We have a lot about Norse paganism, some tarot books, and some miscellaneous books. So, no more witchcraft books coming out. Well, yes, except one here, which is on the bottom. Don't like it. I don't know, not for me. But what we have here about runes, this is amazing. Sorcerer's Creed, the Icelandic book of magic spells. Icelandic rune staves. Then this beautiful book, Blue Silk, Wolf's Head, talks uh, by Shani Oates about Odin. Another book about Odin by Di uh, Diana L. Paxson. And another book, Odin's Gateways by Katie Gerard. Beyond the Northlands, Viking Voyages and the Old Norse Sagas. Imagining the Supernatural North by Eleanor Rosamond Bar... Bleh. Two complicated names. But here you see. This is also great. Comes from the same place as this one. This has the older Futhark and the younger Futhark. Uh, the Icelandic book of Futhark. So here we have each rune. A really beautiful book. So if you're into runes. And then more to the Shiny Old series that I have the Wolf's Head. We have Crafting the Art of Tradition and the Hanged God Odin Grimnir. All by Shiny Oats. Then again two of the treasure section of my bookshelf. The Eddas. But Finnish translations of the Eddas. So if you are into the Norse mythology, you know what the Eddas are. But these are uh, from the year I was born. First editions of the Finnish translations of the Eddas. Then this book is really good as just like a standard reading. It's Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology. This is just in Finnish. It's paperback. But if you're interested about the Norse myths, this is a really easy way to getting into that story. It's like a movie. Then I have a little Finnish book about Greek and Roman mythology. For some reason it's between the Norse books. Don't know why. Then we have the King, uh, the, the King Sagas of Norse by Snorri Sturluson, so it's part of like the Eddas, parts from that, translated into Finnish. And even though my tarot books are upstairs, of course the Book of Toth is here, as is one of the Toth decks. Just gotta have it, if you need to grab it. Then the most current tarot book that I'm reading, I've talked about this before, a Finnish book, a great one by Tero Goldenhill. It's coming also translated in English at some point, so I'll let you know when you guys can read this. Then I have my Joe Dispenza book, which was one of my first books that kicked started my journey. This book helped me to learn how to meditate. And then this one, even though it's a it's a Kabbal a Kabbalistic book for a specific tarot deck, but tarot Kabbalah, but it's too big to have upstairs at the attic. Then this is also a great book that will be translated into English soon. Uh, it's called Sacred Europe by Aki Sederberg and it's coming in English but this I used when I did my pilgrimages into the sacred Finnish nature sites last summer. I used this as an inspiration because he did a pilgrimage through Europe uh, in sacred sites so really interesting just well not specifically witchcraft or anything but just interesting. Then my Phyllis Sickler's book. Actually, Anna just talked more about this book in her channel at Asrelay Tarot. Go check that out. I've talked about this earlier. But deep weird thoughts about the Toth deck. And again, a Toth book. The US Games, Akron and uh, Bantabs book. 
Then a little book about Crowley, The Illustrated Beast, The Alistair Crowley Scrapbook. An interesting little book about Mr. AC. And then that right down at the bottom I still have more books about runes in Finnish. And then I have Finnish books about shamanism. But not really interesting to many of you. So, that was hard. Filming bookshelves isn't easy. Sorry it took so long. And then on my bookshelf is also my second library. My Kindle. Well, let's do a click flash to, the, to my Kindle. There's Triumph of the Moon by Ronald Hutton. Doreen Valiente, which um, biography of Doreen Valiente. And here's, here is the first part of the Wicca 333 and 334, all one Wicca. That's the first part. One more, two more Jimal Diffiosa's books about Alexander's. Some Norse witchcraft, Seder. More books of runes. And then the Eddas, Toth books, books about Alistair Crowley, tarot cards, psychic tarot, tarot books, tarot books, tarot books. But my most favorite recent books were Moon Magic, Sea Priestess, and The Goldfoot God by Dion Fortune. And I think those were such great books about if you're into Kabbalah, the Tree of Life and working with deities, working with the feminine principle and the masculine principle. Even though those books are super old, like almost 100 years old, there might be some words that somebody finds offensive. And also in those Kindle version, there are a shit ton of typos, but I don't mind, I can read it. But those were like my highlight books for the end of last year. But I guess this is taking long enough. If you have questions on the books, let me know down below. I'm now gonna go to sauna. We are waiting for a snowstorm happening here in Finland, so until next time. Bye guys!